Chapter Number Thirty of Nan Sherwood at Lakeview Hall. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Nan Sherwood at Lakeview Hall by Annie Rowe Carr. Chapter Thirty a great surprise the girls all admitted that it was the very strangest thing that could possibly have happened the hall did not seem like itself the students stood around in groups and talked about it the reckless ones took advantage of it and did almost as they pleased the more conscientious pupils said we must help dr Bula all we can by being particularly good just now the younger pupils went past a certain closed door behind the main stairway on the first floor on their tippy toes and with hushed voices for four whole days nobody saw mrs cup about lakeview hall the girls were told that private business had called her away but some of the older ones especially friends of nan and bess knew that it was miss vane's business and not the matron's that had called the latter away mr mason had gone into court on behalf of young hiram pease made the town farm authorities show cause why they had ever bound the boy out to mrs vane the village milliner and made rather pointed inquiries as to what had become of the legacy that hiram's great-uncle had left him in the end the local paper told all about it and really there was nothing in the story to hurt mrs cupp's reputation and the only fact brought out in the testimony against miss vane was that the maiden lady had not understood boys and had been so harsh to hiram that he had run away and for more than six months had haunted the old boathouse below lakeview hall living precariously on what he could pilfer here and there in the end hiram's affairs were straightened out and a kindly clergyman was made guardian of the boy during his minority he was to have an education and a chance to be like other boys mrs cupp came back to her duties as grim as ever and nobody dared to question her about it least of all any of the girls the christmas holidays were approaching and grace mason brought an invitation from her mother for nan sherwood and bess harley to spend a portion of the vacation at the mason home in chicago bess accepted eagerly for the masons were very delightful people and an invitation to their town house was a compliment indeed nan however answered no i am sure i cannot do it gracie she said over and over again i have to meet my father and mother when they come back from scotland and go home to tilbury with them and and my school days are quite quite ended i shall have to begin to think of more serious things she would give walter no more satisfaction either even when mrs mason wrote a personal note to nan repeating the invitation the girl could only write in return that she saw no possibility of circumstances allowing her to be with her friends in chicago during the holidays this only goes to show how little we really know in this world of what happens to us even in the immediate future for if the reader cares to learn what actually happened to nan and her friends that very vacation at the mason city home she need only read the next volume of this series entitled nan sherwood's winter holidays or rescuing the runaways how such a change came about in nan's plans and circumstances was a great surprise indeed the end of the term was in sight 
nan had caught up in her miss studies and her standing was very satisfactory indeed dr prescott had praised her for her record i shall be as sorry to lose you my dear as any pupil i ever had declared the preceptress and i still hope that some way may be found to make possible the continuation of your course here at the hall that had pleased nan immensely but she had no hope of the principal's wish coming true she tried to keep her record high to the very last day not even neglecting professor krenner's lectures upon architectural drawing amelia and nan attended the last of these one afternoon at the professor's cabin up the lake shore they skated up the cove to the strait behind the isle of hope in warm weather the girls sometimes went picnicking to the isle of hope it was a rocky eminence thrust out of the lake half a mile off the mainland professor krenner's cabin was a very cozy place a single big room with the fireplace at either end in which the flames now leaped ruddily among the birch sticks and with a corner cut off with navajo blankets for a bedroom one side wall was hung with the professor's drawings the one opposite with many curd skins of birds and beasts for the professor was a taxidermist when the work of the architectural drawing class was over professor kremer took his silver bugle down from the wall and went outside with the girls to wake the echoes on the isle of hope he had just lifted the bugle to his lips and sent the first call ringing across the ice ta-ra 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 ra ra ta ra when amelia seized nan by the arm and cried oh who's coming they all looked down the street a figure in a red cap was dashing up the ice at great speed and waving a tippet in a most excited manner why grasped nan it's bess they went down to the shore to meet nan's chum bess rushed up to them and threw herself into nan's arms guess guess what's happened nan sherwood she fairly shrieked i i couldn't gasped nan actually turning pale you've got to you've got to guess it's the very wonderfulest thing wonderfulest murmured procrastination boggs that's a new one i'm going to look it up i couldn't guess bess said nan again weakly you haven't got to leave lakeview hall cried the delighted bess you are coming back next term nan's color came back she sighed and wiped her eyes but she shook her head slowly no dear i told you before i could not accept your father's help it would not be right said nan oh nonsense who said anything about that demanded bess in disgust i heard him talking about it things are all right your folks have got some money after all and they sent me after you who sent you after me suddenly cried nan seizing the reckless and excited bess by the shoulders oh oh ouch dr beulah of course what for demanded nan exasperated and fairly shaking her why oh didn't i tell you nan dear your father and your mother they have just arrived from scotland and they are waiting for you now in dr beulah's office joy never kills that is sure but when she was folded in mumsey's arms and papa sherwood stood by waiting his turn to hug his plucky little daughter nan really thought her heart would burst it beat so hard it was not until later that she heard about the money or cared to ask about it her parents had settled their business in scotland so suddenly and had left for the united states so hurriedly that they could send no further news about the settlement of hugh blake's legacy under the scotch law 
no matter how many times a man has been married or how many children he has he can will his personal property as he pleases the two women who claimed the laird of emberton's steward as their parent could fight in the courts for possession of his real estate only and most of the wealth hugh blake had amassed was in cash in bank therefore mr and mrs sherwood came home amply supplied with funds and the possibility of poverty for the family retreated below the horizon for the time being at least mr sherwood proposed going into business at once and nan could return to lakeview hall at the opening of the succeeding term meanwhile the present term came to a happy conclusion and nan and bess looked forward with gleeful expectation to their visit to chicago immediately after christmas End of chapter 30 Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. End of Nan Sherwood at Lakeview Hall by Annie Rowe Carr